Take a moment and ask yourself, what are you feeling right now? For some of you, this will be easy. If you're about to come up in front of a room full of people and summarize your graduate thesis in three minutes or less, you may easily identify feeling nervous. I study alexithymia, the inability to identify one's emotional experience regardless of circumstance. I first became interested in this line of research several years ago. As part of my graduate training, I was working as a therapist for teenage boys who had committed violent felonies. I noticed that many of my clients struggled to empathize with the victims of their crimes. So, like a good scientist, I turned to psychology research to learn evidence-based methods of increasing empathy. I was shocked to find very little on the topic. What I did find was alexithymia. I learned some researchers believe alexithymia lies at the core of empathic deficits, arguing that in order to truly empathize with another person, we first have to have awareness of our own emotional experience. This launched my research into alexithymia. I wanted to know if I could increase empathy by decreasing alexithymia. My first task was developing a new way to measure alexithymia. For the last 40 years, researchers have relied on questionnaires to assess alexithymia. Well, there are some obvious limitations of asking people who by definition lack emotional awareness if they have emotional awareness. <laughs> so I developed a lab-based task. I show participants a series of film clips selected by other researchers to evoke one emotion above and beyond all others. Then I ask, what emotion did you just experience the most? People without alexithymia almost always select the intended emotion. For example, when I show the famous diner scene from when Harry met Sally, these people almost always report feeling amused. People with alexithymia are much less likely to choose this intended emotion. They also take much longer to respond and report the whole task as being very difficult. In addition to these differences, though, I was surprised to find some similarities. After I ask, what did you experience the most, I ask if participants experience any of 30 secondary emotions. I find that people in both groups report experiencing an average of 11 additional emotions per film clip. And when I ask, how much did you experience those emotions on a scale of 1 to 10, they also, there are also no differences. These results are exciting because they tell me that people with alexithymia have intact emotional experiences, but they struggle to make sense of it the way most of us do. I believe we can train people to have increased emotional awareness, and I'm currently running a series of studies in my lab to figure out how. I predict that increasing emotional awareness will increase empathy and hope this research will be used to design effective interventions to increase empathy in populations like juvenile offenders. Thank you.